ahead and stand with me and make your way to the front. We're going to worship Jesus tonight. Good evening, everyone. I hope you had a great day. Did any of you guys have a day off today? Okay, okay, a few of you. I'm glad you came tonight. We are the Circuit Riders. This is our Monday night. We're happy you're here. All right, gather in, gather in. And would you say this after me? Would you say, Jesus, Jesus. speak to me tonight. I'm ready for you. Are you? I'm ready for you. We're ready tonight. And would you just invite the Holy Spirit in this place? Five seconds. Just say, Jesus, would you come? Holy Spirit, come in this room. Come in this place. Come to my heart. Would you speak to me tonight? Thank you, Jesus. I just feel, we all just feel even as a team for just fresh encounters tonight with Jesus. I feel like God's gonna do something in our heart, like an impartation. So when we leave, that means that God does something, it imprints on our hearts, on our spirits. You know, when you're thinking about it for days and days and you're wondering and it draws you closer to Jesus. That's what I feel like he's gonna do tonight. So I wanna read um, a verse out of Psalm 63. Are you ready? This is gonna be honey for your soul. Are you ready for this? This is food for your soul. God's word is alive, every, every word is true, and it speaks to us, and it changes us, and when we hear it, it is a declaration. It is God's own words in the Bible. So Psalms um, 63 says this, you God are my God, earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you, my whole being longs for you. Say that with me, say I thirst for you God. My whole being longs for you, God. In verse 2, it says, I have seen you in your sanctuary. And behold, your powers and your glory, because your love is better than life. My lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live. Say that. I will praise you as long as I live. I will praise you as long as I live. I will be fully satisfied with the many riches of food. I will be seeing. My mouth will praise you. I love this. In verse 7, it says, I cling to you. Your right hand, it upholds me. So God, we just say we're so thirsty for you. We long for you. We cling to you. We cling to you, Jesus. What does it look like to cling to him? What does it look like to thirst for him? Let this be your declaration to Him. Let this be your worship to Him. Cling to Him. How I like to do that is I let all distraction fall away. All distraction, all those random thoughts that come in your mind, you have control to let them bow their knee. You have control to not think about them, but to worship Jesus. So cling to Him tonight. We love you, Jesus. This is our praise. This is our worship. We love you, God. Give it up for Jesus tonight. Come on. I want you to turn to your neighbor. I want you to say, neighbor, are you excited to be in the presence of God tonight? Come on, let's lift up a shout one more time. Jesus, we welcome you. We welcome you. Come on, sing this with me. As long as I live. As long as I live, as long as I live, I'll bless the Lord. As long as I live, as long as I live, as long as I live, I'll bless the Lord. As long as I live, as long as I live, yes, as long as I live, I'll bless the Lord. As long as I live, as long as I live. Come on, you got that? Let's sing it out. I'll bless the Lord. As long as I live, as long as I live, as long as I live.
Jesus, we're here for one thing tonight. We're here to praise the Lamb. We're here to worship your name.
how good he is. Lord, you're so good. We're so undeserving to be in this room, worshiping you, Lord, shouting your name, God. Oh, I'm filled with joy, Jesus, because you're just that good, Lord. You're just that good. Thank you, Jesus. Sing. And I remember when all I longed to do was give you praise.
Bring us back to your first love, Jesus. You're the one we look to, Lord. In Jesus' light, the first love fire. Come and be my one desire. Jesus' light, the first love fire. Come and be us, my one desire.
There's nobody but you There's nobody but you I'm running with all that I have I'm giving you all that I have I'm there's nobody but you No, there's nobody but you I'm running after you with all I have I'm running after you with all I have There's nobody but you And there's nobody but you I'm running after you with all I have Running after you with all I have There's nobody but you And there's nobody but you I'm running after you with all I have I'm running after you
Yes, I want us to sing this song one more time. And I want us to sing it, here he comes running. Here he comes running. Here he comes running and he will never look back. I want us to remember that there was a time in our life when we were walking the other way. But here he came running. Here he came running to you and he gripped us. And he gripped me and he turned me around and he pursued our hearts. I feel like what's happening in the room is God is revealing himself to us. Here he comes running. God is not offended with you. He is not angry with you. He is permanently always in heaven in love with you, unoffended with you. So can we sing that again? But can we say, here he comes running. See him, see him, encounter his love. It is the Father's love.
with just the voices. Just the voices one more time. Lift it up. to give you everything, to pursue you, Jesus. We love you, God. We thank you for filling this room. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen, amen. You guys can head back to your seats. That was so beautiful. What a beautiful sound of worship that was. Amen. Thank you, Lord. All right. We are transitioning. Find a seat. Give your neighbor a high five. Say, I am so glad you came here tonight. Now turn to your other neighbor and say, I am so glad you came here tonight. Amen. Thank you, girl. Make your way back. That's right. We have some announcements, you guys. I'm going to first start with the bad news. But I have some good news after that. So you have to prepare yourself. Guys, the bad news is, here it is, no Monday night next week. But good news is, good news is, we are continuing to have Monday nights. So only one week, it's next week, no Monday nights. So everyone say boo. boo. But then everyone say ah. ah. Monday nights, not next week, but the following week. Okay, also, Greenhouse, if you're a local, can you just grab your phone and, and take a picture for this so you can remember when you said, what, what was she saying? Guys, I still struggle remembering all of our times too. So take a picture. Greenhouse sets is not happening on Thursday, but it is happening on Wednesday from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. So if you still want to come to the morning set, you are welcome, but it's not happening Thursday. So no Monday night next week and no Thursday night next week, but we will resume June 5th. Amen, amen. All right, as you take your seats, I have one more announcement. New Greenhouse single. Are you guys ready? Don't put it up yet. Oh, they didn't put it up. But new Greenhouse single, You Saved Me. It is amazing. How many of you guys listen to the Greenhouse music, the singles, the Circuit Rider music? Wave your hand. Wave your hand. That is amazing. Now, when it comes out, show it some love. Send it to your friend. I always do this when new music comes out. I'm like, this is amazing. I am getting encountered listening to this. I need to send this 
to every single person I know that needs an encounter. So that's what I do. You should do that too. All right, Circuit Rider Schools, if you haven't heard, I'm sure you have. Our Orange County School is happening here June 28th, amen, through July 5th. Scan the QR code. If you haven't scanned it yet or signed up or you don't have something going on this summer like this, you really should. I always say you will never, ever, ever regret pursuing Jesus for, you know, several days. I believe it's seven to ten days-ish. So you'll never regret just taking time worshiping Jesus every single day. If you feel like you need an encounter, if you feel dull, if you feel confused, literally get in God's presence. I promise you that thing will break. So Sergrata Schools is happening. Also, if you are in high school, we have Riders Youth Camp. Amen, amen. That's right. Dallas, Texas, amazing place. July 9th through the 15th and Kona, Hawaii. Guys, get your tan on. Go to Hawaii and July 24th through August 3rd. Sign up. You will never, ever regret it. Okay. May I have a hush over the crowd? Hush. That's right. Thank you. Now, can I have a drum roll, please, and a big welcome to Zach Nash. He is going to be preaching tonight. Thank you. Thank you. All you guys in the back, we got like a whole row open here if you want seats. It's up to you. There's breakthrough in that area over there. I think, real quick, I think the slide was wrong. I think it said we had Monday night returning on June 5th. That's next week. That's not true. It's the next week, June 12th. Someone shout amen. 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 All right. You guys doing good? Well, I'm going to try to limit myself to about 30, maybe 40 minutes for a couple reasons. Number one, the anointing is so clearly on our worship team tonight and on Josh and the whole crew. So I want to get them back up here. But I do have something I feel the Lord gave me for you. Are you ready for it? You guys ready? You guys in the back ready? I can't see you. I feel like you're a dangerous crew back there holding up the back wall. I love it. You guys ready? Ready, ready? Okay, okay, okay. Here we go. Here we go. Can I give you the title of my message tonight? The title of the message tonight is called The Intersection of Breakthrough. The Intersection of Breakthrough. Everybody say breakthrough. So here's the deal. We've talked about it on Monday nights. It's a theological concept. We've all heard it. It's that we live in this now but not yet. Have you heard us talk about it? You've heard that kingdom is now but it's not yet, right? We live in the post-resurrection, pre-second coming of Jesus. Amen? Amen. There we go. So we live in this tension. And has anyone ever in your life felt like, man, I just feel like I'm kind of in tension right now? Any witnesses? A couple people. The rest of you are just, you're just crushing it. Okay. So often in life, I believe you raise your hand in the spirit. The Christian life is often lived in tension. We live in this place of waiting. I, I'm going to call it tonight the waiting room. Everybody say waiting room. waiting room. It's inevitable. Every person in this room tonight, some, in some area of your life, you are in the waiting room. You're in a waiting room. You're waiting for a job. You're waiting for that paycheck to come in. You're waiting for that guy to call. Oh, I felt it. I knew it. It's by the Spirit right now. Guys, you're waiting on that girl to notice the years and years of weak flirting you've been doing. Why hasn't she noticed me? It's because you don't know how to flirt. No, okay. Right? We're waiting. We're waiting. We're waiting for the promotion in ministry. We're waiting for the platform. We're waiting for our moment. We're waiting for our friends to get saved. We're waiting for our family to get restored. We're waiting for a promise to come to pass. We're waiting on a promise. You're waiting on a word. Fill in the blank. It's inevitable. We're all waiting on something. But here's the deal. Anybody ever had to go up to like Seattle? Has anybody ever had to drive to Seattle from here? It's like you can't fly, so you like put in like, okay, direction to Seattle. It's like 
get on the five, and then it's just like sideways eight infinity, like forever. Anybody ever made that boring drive up the five all the way up? It's like, is it ever going to end? In life, there's moments when you're on this trajectory, you're like, is the waiting room ever going to end? Can I give you good news tonight? Eventually, you come to an intersection. Eventually, you come to the intersection of breakthrough. Everybody say breakthrough. So tonight, I'm, we're going to talk about the waiting room, but I feel like there's a mindset shift that the Holy Spirit wants to bring where he's saying, I want you to begin to see the waiting room as the breakthrough room. I want you to begin to see your season of waiting as a season of breakthrough. I want to tell you tonight, by the Spirit, I believe this. Can I prophesy to you right now? Can I do it? I'm going to do it. I feel it. By the Spirit, breakthrough is at your door. Some of you received it. Some of you don't believe it. By the end of the message, I'm telling you, you will be on your feet up here believing, calling down the breakthrough because heaven has it available for you. But the breakthrough comes when we change the way we think. The waiting room is all about your mindset shift. God says, I got to keep you in this place so I can change the way you think. I'm getting ahead of myself, but that's what we're going after tonight. Because here's the reality. Jesus deeply cares about what we think about. He's deeply concerned with what goes on in between your ears. I don't know if you've ever thought about that, but it's true. And that have you ever experienced the war that rages over your thoughts? People get so confused about their life because they have this onslaught of evil thoughts and all of a sudden they think because they thought it that they are it. I'm telling you, there's a war over our thoughts. And Jesus is so concerned about how we think. Mark 1.15 says this. This is what Jesus declared. You ready? The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Repent. That literally means it's a mindset shift. Jesus is saying, listen up. The kingdom of God has arrived in me. And so now that this kingdom has invaded your space, you got to change everything about the way you think. Everything's different now that this kingdom has come. Change the way you think. He says, my kingdom is not of this world. It's not of this world. That means it didn't originate in this earthly dimension. This is, it didn't have its origins here. It's from above. But that kingdom has invaded this reality. And so now there's this way of kingdom thinking called the renewed mind that is in full opposition to carnality. Paul uses this language in Romans 8. He says, the mind set on the flesh is death. The mind set on the flesh is death. But, everybody say but. The mind that is set on the spirit is life and peace. The mind that is governed, is regulated by the spirit produces life and peace. But the mind that is set on the flesh is death. So tonight, the father has sent the Holy Spirit on assignment. He, he sent the Holy Spirit on assignment tonight. And tonight, I believe the Holy Spirit is bringing a sword of clarity to cut off all the confusion and the fake narrative written about your life, whether self-imposed or written by someone else, tonight the Lord wants to settle it once and for all by the Spirit. He says, no more false narrative. I'm elevating you. Come up here and see what I have to say. Because here's the reality. The world will always write you off. They won't understand you. Jesus told us. They hated me. So guess what, dudes? They're going to hate you. They hated me. They're going to hate you. But here's the deal. Their opinion of him. Oh, you got to catch this. Their opinion of him did not deter him from his destination. 
Say what you want about me. Think what you want about me. Don't make a hill of beans to me. I know what the Father has said. I know where I'm headed. You guys ever heard that, hill of beans? It literally means I don't care. Who gives a rip about a hill of beans? Not me. Never seen one. Don't ever think about it. Out of sight, out of mind. They hated me. They hated you. But from the manger to the tree, his face was set. His face was set. I know what my father has said about me. Faith is a perspective. It elevates you to a different vantage point. That's why Jesus could live the way he lived. That's, I mean, come on. That's like they were trying to kill him constantly. You think at one point finally he'd be like, man, they almost tried to throw me off this cliff. I better back down. They rejected me in my hometown. They didn't have like welcome home signs when I came back. No balloons, no party, straight up dishonor. You know what he did? He didn't retreat. He doubled down. He multiplied himself into his guys. He gave them authority and he sent them out. He said, I'm going to multiply myself into the earth. I'm not retreating. I'm advancing. So we got we to get caught up tonight. The Lord, the Holy Spirit wants to elevate us in our thinking. Everybody say thinking. thinking. Can we dig into it tonight? So I want to show you a, a theme in scripture, okay? So I'm going to hit a few points and uh, some overview. So here's the deal. You got to give me, got to give me some, some permission here because you could preach 500 different sermons times 1,000 through some of these stories I'm, I'm going to just briefly hit on, okay? So the point of tonight is not me dissecting one specific story, giving you the context, giving you all the details, going line by line, verse by verse. My, my hope tonight is that the Holy Spirit will catch you up in, in, in God's ways a little bit and how he deals with his leaders. Because say, you're a leader. Say, I'm a leader. I'm a leader. You're a leader. You have influence. You have a circle of people that you influence. You have a community. You have a family. You have friends. You're a leader. God has called you. God has appointed you. God has anointed you. You are on the earth for a specific purpose. And tonight, God wants to impart to us a little bit of his ways of preparing his leaders, not in the waiting room, but in the breakthrough room. So I'm going to give a little, bit of, a little bit of overview. Does that sound good? Number one, we're going to talk a little bit about Abraham and Sarah. Who knows the story of Abraham and Sarah? Most of us. If you don't know the story, it's Genesis chapter 12. It happens after the Tower of Babel. God confuses the language. Go read the story. Very fascinating. But then it says that in, in Genesis chapter 12, the Lord speaks to Abram at the time, later changed his name to Abraham. And this is what he said. He said to Abram, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. And I will make of you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and him who dishonors you, I will curse. And in you, and in you All the families of the earth shall be blessed. Talk about a prophetic word. This isn't like a dollar general, 99 cent, like prophecy, you know, fortune cookie moment. Let's see what it says. Oh, you're going to have a better day tomorrow. Oh, you're going to make a new friend next week. Come on, you've all done it. You've all opened up the fortune cookie and hope that it's a prophetic word for you. No, this is the creator of the universe speaking to Abraham says, listen up, I'm going to call you out of the land of comfort, out of what's familiar to you. I'm sending you out, and in you, all the families of the earth are going to be blessed through your life. This is a life-altering word and a history-shaping word. This is no small prophetic word. So Genesis chapter 12, Abraham, Abram, gets this word. Are you tracking? Genesis chapter 21, the promise that was given in chapter 12 is born in chapter 21. That's what it says. Verse 1, the Lord visited Sarah, Abraham's wife, as he had said. Man, you could preach a whole message. The Lord did what he said. 
You see what I'm saying? And we could spend, you could spend hours in each of these. I'm, I'm having to restrain myself. The Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did to Sarah as he had promised. <sighs> Message number two. He did what he said. He did what he promised. And Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age at the time of which God had spoken to him. Abraham called the name of his son who was born to him, whom Sarah bore him, Isaac. Genesis 12, life-altering prophetic promise. Genesis 21, the birth of the promise. But there's a gap. Everybody say gap. There's some chapters missing that we, that we didn't dig into there. There's a lot of storyline in there. So I want, you to, I want you to put this story, can you put it over in like one compartment of your brain? Chapter 12, chapter 21. Word of promise, birth of promise, gap. Love the gap. All right. That's Abraham and Sarah. What about Joseph? Everybody know the story of Joseph? I believe Matt Nelson, if you were there, preached on Joseph. In the fall, it was incredible, so I'm not going to repeat that, nor could I. Genesis 37.3, though, says this about Joseph, that Israel, his papa, his daddy, loved Joseph more than any other of his sons because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a robe of many colors. Right there, Joseph receives. He has a distinguishing mark about him. It sets him apart from his brother's. Go on to verse 7 and 9. Joseph has two dreams of Genesis 37. Joseph has two dreams. Here they are. Behold, this is Joseph, we were binding sheaves in the field, and behold, my sheaf arose and stood upright. And behold, your sheaves gathered around it and bowed down to my sheaf. Then he dreamed another dream, and he told it to his brothers and said, Behold, I have dreamed another dream, the sun, the moon, And the 11 stars were bowing down to me. So if you know the story, he shares these dreams. He's got his epic coat on of many colors. He sticks out among his brothers. They get angry. They sell him. He goes to prison. That's another sermon. But here's the deal. He has these prophetic dreams, these God dreams. Anybody ever had a God dream? You have a God dream. He has a God life-altering dream. History-shaping word of the Lord in Genesis 37, but it's not until Genesis 41 that we see Joseph, after being in prison, he gets put in charge of Pharaoh's house over all of Egypt, and ultimately not until chapter 45 that his family gets restored. Everybody say gap. There's a gap. What about Moses? Can we talk about Moses? You guys tracking? Put, Put Joseph, you got Abraham and Sarah over here, put Joseph back your brain there. Moses, man, I love this story. Exodus 2, Moses, filled with good intention, it it, it goes wrong, and he's burdened for his people, and he sees an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, and so he strikes down the Hebrew and he kills him. Word gets to Pharaoh, so Moses has to flee for his life out of fear. Good intention, gone bad. Season 1. And say, so... He flees for his life to Midian. And then we read in the scriptures that it was 40 years later. Everybody say 40 years. 40 years. 40 years later, on the backside of a mountain, Moses has a life-altering encounter with the burning bush. And all of a sudden, God begins to speak to him about sending him back to the place of his greatest failure. Forty years later, Exodus 2.11, he kills the guy. Forty years later, burning bush moment. Everybody say gap. There's a gap. That's a big one, 40 years. Can we, can, can we go on? So you got Moses over here. We got one more. You tracking? You good? It's making sense? Can we talk about David? Let's talk about David for a minute. 1 Samuel 16, 13. Samuel, the prophet, okay, little context, just so we're aware. Saul's king, but Saul does something that all of us are prone to do. Saul, 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 (laughs) Saul, love that. 
Saul, he moves outside of the parameters of his anointing. He does what only Samuel is meant to do. Come on, there's a whole sermon in that. Not understanding the limitations that our anointing give us. Saul moves outside of his God-given parameters, limitations, moves beyond his anointing, ends up losing the anointing, but he still is king, still has the crown. So Samuel, 1 Samuel 16, 13, Samuel goes, sees all David's brothers, goes to Jesse's house. It's not these guys. Do you have another son? Got one, got one buddy in the back, little David. We see that Samuel takes a horn of oil and he anoints David in the midst of his brothers in 1 Samuel 16, 13. And it says that the spirit of the Lord rushed upon David from that day forward. Young teenager David on the hillside watching the sheep, playing his harp. All of a sudden, the Lord handpicks him and Samuel goes and anoints him in 1 Samuel 16. But it's not until 2 Samuel 5, that's a long storyline. 1 Samuel 16, anointed by Samuel. 2 Samuel 5, all of the elders of Israel come to the king at Hebron, and King David made a covenant with them before the Lord, and they anointed him there, David, king over Israel. 1 Samuel 16, anointed. 2 Samuel 5, he becomes king. It's possible, it's possible to be anointed but not have the crown, while at the same time it's possible to have the crown but not have the anointing. Samuel anointed Saul with a vial of oil. Vial was, was handmade, was made by man. He anointed David with a horn of oil, which is made from an animal that gave its life to produce what the oil poured from. It's the, it's the difference between a man-made anointing and a God anointing. It's, it's two different things. And what happens is, come on, in the waiting room, I'm taking you somewhere, in the waiting room, we think that out of human ingenuity, we can produce the promise by our own means. And what happens is we move outside of our God-given parameters and limitations, and all of a sudden we lose our anointing while still trying to keep position. But David, oh, but David had the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Human ingenuity cannot produce the promises of God in your life. What happens in the waiting room, it happened to Abraham and Sarah, man. I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but it correlates. They get this crazy promise, but Sarah's barren. She can't have children. So out of her frustration... And out of her own limitations, she says, Abraham, take Hagar. Take Hagar. So out of frustration and impatience, they produce an Ishmael. And the promise was never meant to be through Ishmael. It was meant to be through Sarah when Isaac was born. So if you find yourself tonight... In your chair on a Monday night, Memorial Day, Honey, or Costa Mesa, Huntington Beach, Costa Mesa, Orange County. If you find yourself in that gap zone, in that waiting room in your life, in whatever area it may be, I want to encourage you tonight that you're in good company. Abraham was there. It's good company. Read Romans 4. Dig into that. If you're in the waiting room tonight, just know that Joseph was there. He was in a dungeon. Read the story. If you're in the waiting period tonight, just know Moses was there. The great deliverer, 40 years on the backside of a mountain. He was there. David, David was there. He was a young teenager 
when he got anointed. It wasn't until he was 30 that he became king. You're in good company. The Lord is preparing you. The anointing is preparing you for the crown in your life. You didn't catch it. The anointing is working in you. The word of the Lord, Jeremiah 1, says that the Lord watches over his word to perform it. The Lord does. You don't watch over the word given to you. The Lord watches over the word. The Lord watches over the word to perform it. The word, it's like leaven in your soul. It's working itself out in you so that it can work itself out through you. The word is working. It's working. There's purpose in the pressure you feel. There's calling in the crushing that you're going through. It's when the olive is crushed that the oil is produced. There's life happening in the waiting room. But when we try to do it the human way, come on, we settle for Hagar and produce Ishmael. I remember when we had Michael Koulianos and Joy Dawson in the garage with us in the early days, and Michael Koulianos dropped this line, and I will never forget it. I think the guy's name is Walter Butler. I think that was his name that he quoted, but he, he dropped this line. He said, to hurry God is to find fault with him. To hurry God is to find fault with him. Is anybody else but me guilty? Somebody comfort my soul right now. To hurry God is to find fault with him. What happens is, as we approach the intersection of breakthrough, we get antsy. We get antsy. There's some things that happen right before breakthrough. You've all experienced it. You've all experienced it. There's moments, there's things, there's situations. Can I go, can I walk us through a few situations that might, that might happen that you might be able to relate with that as you approach that intersection of breakthrough, some of these things may be prevalent in your life. You probably experienced them a long time ago. Not right now. Here's number one. You ready? You guys tracking? You good? I'm going somewhere. I'm telling you, the Lord's going to infuse. He's going to impart something to you tonight. He's elevating us. We're on a journey. Number one, this is what happens. When we approach the intersection of breakthrough, there will be the temptation to stop moving and seek comfort. So breakthrough's approaching, but we start looking for the familiar. Example being, Peter goes back to fishing. Dude just spent, I mean, was casting out devils, was doing the stuff, fish, bread, multiplied, feeding masses. Dude's the one that had the revelation. You're the son of God. I'm going to build my rock, my church on this rock. Right? It's Peter. Jesus is crucified. All of a sudden, just know that Acts chapter 1 and 2 and 3, they're just around the corner. I mean, it's, it's within sight. Like global breakthrough, the church is about to explode in revival. I mean, more than they could ever have imagined. And Peter stops moving, seeks comfort. We look for the familiar. We resort back to what we once knew. We we, we sacrifice new revelation for old knowings. We, come on. Oh, uh, we live on yesterday's bread. We, we live on what worked last year. Oh, it worked last year. Worked five years ago. And we're, oh, I'm, this, is, this is too harsh. We become too spiritually lazy to press in and say, maybe God's elevating me to show me something new. We resort back to the way things were. Number two, confusion. Oh, man. Nobody's confused in this room. But there are people in the world that are confused. And so we are, we are bringing clarity to them in Jesus' name. Here's what happens as we approach breakthrough. Confusion sets in. The voice of doubt tries to overtake our thoughts, and we begin to question everything. That wasn't really the Lord. That was my own. That was me. The Lord didn't say that two years ago. 
that encounter I had at the altar when it was so clear I was shaking on the ground the power of God was on me I couldn't move for like four hours that was emotion that was emotion the spirit doesn't move that way anymore no it, that's that's a that's a real train of thought right before breakthrough Ah, oh, that was just emotionalism. The band was really hype, and the guy on the microphone was going loud, and I just felt, yeah, that, mm-mm. I'm not really called overseas. I'm not called to be a missionary. I'm not called, no, I, mm-mm. I think the Lord really wants to use me in the marketplace, and I, I'm not, or flip it, flip it. You want it to be a missionary, and the, God calls you, nah, I'm not called to the marketplace. I need to be a missionary. I need to really do something for God. That wasn't the Lord when he told me he wanted me to fund the kingdom. I'm just saying, confusion, confusion is always fighting us, saying, turn the car around. Go back to safe territory. Okay, are we okay? A few more? We're ramping up. I'm telling you, we're going to end in a wild celebration. We're getting there. Number three. Oh, this is good. Fake prophetic words. Oh, when the breakthrough is coming, so is the fake word from the well-intentioned friend. Oh, my. Uh, The Lord's about to bring breakthrough in your capacity to carry a greater responsibility in the kingdom. The Lord's bringing breakthrough for you to host presence on your life. The Lord's bringing breakthrough for miracles. The Lord's bringing breakthrough to move in signs and wonders. The Lord's bringing breakthrough in the prophetic. And all of a sudden, a well-intentioned, insecure friend projects his own insecurity through his prophecy to you. Is that too much? Might have been too much. But just before that breakthrough comes and knocks on your door, just know the Mr. Slow Down and Rest word is going to ring your doorbell. (laughs) Trials are coming, brother. I got a word one time. I'm not going to say when. I'm not going to say when. But, like, I, you know when you're, like, there's seasons of your life where you're just soaring. You're like, man, the wind of the Spirit's at my back. It's like the Midas touch. I, it's not, you know, anybody can relate to that? Okay. We, you get in those zones, right? You're just crushing it in life. It's awesome. We're meant to live that way. Okay. We're meant to live that way. The Midas touch. I'm, what's called the Jesus touch. Hey. So you got the Jesus touch on your life. Everything's going good. I remember I wanted to pray for us. I don't know if they're getting pr- This guy wants to pray. And... Before the word was spoken, I got nuked with this garlic aroma. Instantly knew fake words coming. I could smell it. Don't eat garlic before you're going to be on the ministry team. But the, seriously, but the word, the word came. I just see you're going through hardships right now. Trials. Life is hard. I just want to pray peace over you. And I just remember me and my wife are just standing there like, I'm like turning my head like this. First off, the smell. And then but secondly, just like, just so confused. I'm like, no, we're crushing it. But then like you start thinking like, oh man, like, shoot. Did I, Lord, did I miss something? Man, babe, baby trials are coming. Maybe we better slow down. Maybe we better reevaluate our life. Like, do we, like, let's do the, you know, what, Right? But when breakthroughs happening, garlic prophecies are headed your way. <laughs> but here's the deal. If you don't answer the doorbell when the fake prophet comes, I don't want to call him fake prophet, just the you get what I'm saying. It's extreme. Just the wrong word when the just the wrong word in the wrong season. You get what I'm saying. You get what I'm saying. You get what I'm saying. I don't mean to be mean. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm trying to prove a point. But if you don't answer the door to the, to the kind of off word, kinder terms, you got to know something. Old sin patterns and habits are sneaking around the back to see if the back door of your house is open. You didn't answer the doorbell, but temptation is just looking for a cracked window. Oh, sliding doors open, let a little breeze in the house, but they can sneak in there. 
old sin patterns, the enemy would love nothing more than when breakthrough is about to happen for you to forfeit the next season of life by falling back into something you weren't created to do. Can we keep going? Bank account will dry up. Oh, my goodness. We need to pray. Some of you right now are about to stand up and start screaming. <laughs> Financial issues are, I mean, it's pretty common. They get really, really close when breakthrough is really close. That bank account just starts shrinking. I'm going to send you around the world. You're going to prophesy and disciple nations. You look at your bank account, $12. I was the brokest I had ever been when I was getting married. Just being honest, I, I, I tried, I tried, but here's the deal. Every false security will get tested before the breakthrough. Oh, he's preaching. He's preaching. Can I do one more? Jealousy might break out all around you. The J word. We don't like to say that word. You just say jealousy and you just, ooh. People jealous of me. But it's real. Jealousy is a real thing. The Bible talks about it. So here's what happens. Jealousy starts breaking around, breaking out around you. And all of a sudden, you've got to dumb down what the Lord said to you to feed the insecurity of people around you. Oh, that was too much. That was too much. That was too much. That was too much. But you got to keep people settled, so you got to dumb down the prophecy. And then when you dumb down the prophecy so much, you start believing the dumbed down version of the prophecy. My Lord. The list goes on and on. The point being that there's, there's always going to be things that come when you're at the intersection of breakthrough that say, get off the highway, turn the car around, that's not God, you weren't made for this, you shouldn't be going that fast, you need to tone it down, you're misunderstood, you've got selfish ambition, you're just out for yourself. And in reality, you're just trying to obey God. Yeah. It's okay for you to have great aspirations and dreams for your life. Some of you don't believe it. It's okay for you to have massive dreams over your life. But there will be things that come at the intersection of breakthrough that want to deter you. I want to give you a personal story. I remember 2012, the Lord made it so clear I was supposed to move to Southern California. I'd been through here one time on like a week trip with a team I didn't really know hardly anyone in the circuit rider crew except I had seen them in passing or they maybe were in Kona when I was there teaching. So I didn't have any relationship with them, but I just knew. I knew that when I came here that one week, the Lord said, I want you to move to Southern California and join what the circuit riders are doing. And they were, it was fresh in that time. You know, they may have been here like a year, two years maybe at the max. And so I finish this outreach. I go back home, start raising money, moving to California. The people I was with on the trip, they as well felt that they were supposed to move to California. It was a family. So they're like, you can live with us. We'll move out to California, and we'll start rolling with the circuit riders. Epic. Housing. One of my buddies is calling me. He's like, hey, I feel the Lord's drawing me to California. I'm like, oh, epic family to live with. Good buddy wants to come. Man, we're like, things are, things are rolling. Then, I'm like, okay, i got to figure out how to get out there because I really need a car. My brother gives me his car. <sighs> Jesus touch, man, let's go. Things are lining up. And it's like, it's like departure days, like, I don't even know. It's like three or four days out. Like, I'm packed. I'm ready. Got the trip mapped out. Me and my buddy got it all. I mean, we, it was MapQuest at that time. Any MapQuesters out there? Oh, man, we had the national park set up. You don't even know. Zion, we're coming for you. And then, I mean, 
I'm talking, if, if I remember right, within like 72 hours of dipping out, my buddy calls. Hey, man, I really feel like the Lord's just directing me to stay back here. I'll still drive out with you, but I really feel the Lord's directing me to stay home, which is awesome. That's great. Like, do what you got to do. But, you know, it's kind of a blow. You're like, oh, man. Like, you're like, yeah, bro, you got to do what God's calling you to do. But inside, you're like, dude, kidding me? <laughs> Zion plan, dude. California. All right. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. And then phone call number two comes. It's my buddy whose family is moving out here. Hey, man, housing is really difficult to land in Orange County. All we're really going to be able to get is an apartment for our family and our kids. We're not going to have space for you to live with us. Okay, yeah. <laughs> family first, man. <laughs> family first. Love your kids, man. No, I was, I get, you get it, right? But it's real. That's a real thing. No shade on them. I was the same thing, I'll do the same thing in a heartbeat. Family first, for real. But for me, all of a sudden, I'm at the intersection of breakthrough, and I got all these doubts coming. Was this, I mean, man, Lord, am I supposed to do this? I don't know a soul out there. Seen them. They don't know me from Adam. Like, they're going to be like, who are you showing up out there in my Maxima, 2000 Maxima, little dent in the door. I think it was a beauty, man. Black leather, hot. Man, that thing got hot. <laughs> so all of a sudden, right, I'm in this waiting room. Lord, what am I supposed to do? Zach, what did I tell you? You said move to California. Did I tell you who to move there with? No. Did I tell you who you were going to live with? No. What did I tell you to do? Go to California. Okay. Okay. I'm going to California. I give my maximum. My buddy still does the trip. I don't know where I'm going to live. I'm literally driving out to California without housing. I don't know anyone here. I didn't have Matt's number. We didn't know each other. He probably maybe heard through the grapevine that some strange kid from Tennessee is thinking he's moving out. You know, who knows? But I'm driving out, so I have an aunt and uncle who live in the Central Coast. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to drive to their house from Tennessee, across the country. They'll let me stay for a bit until I figure out what I'm going to do. So I get to their house. My buddy comes. It's all fun. We get out to California. Then, like, the day comes. like, hey, man, i, I got to get on my plane back to Ohio. And I'm like, dude, you're really leaving me. So then he leaves, and it's just me. It's just me. The basement of my uncle's house, Central Coast. What in the world is happening? Sleeping one night, I get a dream. And the dream is real clear. It was just a voice. And the dream said, Lou Engel. And I woke up. Three o'clock in the morning. Okay. Personal hero. Don't know him. Don't got his number. Okay, what do I do with this? But it was so clear. I'm talking like so clear, like a voice that startles you awake. So I'm like, Lord, next day praying, what is this about? I'm on YouTube. I come across Lou Engel sharing a prophetic storyline about Southern California. I watch it. I get encountered in my room. Get gripped for Southern California. Go to bed that night. Have another dream. In the middle of the night, a voice startles me awake. Call Amy Sollers. It's Amy Ward now. She's a real prophetic voice into YOM. Had the original circuit rider encounter. Call Amy Sollers. I don't know her. Don't have her number. <laughs> Thanks. What am I supposed to do? Facebook Messenger, dude. <laughs> hey, Amy. Zach, you spoke at my DTS. Came through one time. Had... Dinner in your living room with some of your friends. You have no idea who I am, some stranger. Here's what's happening, A, B, C, and D. Next day, I get a message back. Hey, I'm out of the country. Call so-and-so. Let's get connected. Long story short, within like 24 hours, I moved down to Pasadena, and I'm living in, in the community with Lou Engel and all these circuit riders living in Pasadena. And then I'm just like, what is happening? I went from like, where am I going to like, now I'm like crushing it with my 
personal hero. And I'm like, now I'm planning a trip, and I'm next thing I know, I'm in India over the Ganges River at 5 a.m. with me and just Lou Engle standing, praying, and prophesying over India. And I'm like, I remember having this moment of like, I was just like in, I was there. Like, and I didn't, and I didn't know. Like, this, this wasn't in the plan. Like, this human ingenuity can't get this. But the Lord said, if I told you all that there, you would have never believed me. So I just had to get you out of the land of the familiar. I had to get you into ambiguity and obscurity so that you actually depended on my word. So here I am. Over a decade later, had the Lord told me what he was going to do, I would have never believed him. It's like he said, Abraham, you got to get out of your father's country. You got to get out into the land of ambiguity. You got to step into the unfamiliar. When God begins to take things away from your life, hear me on this one, hear me on this one. When God begins to take things away from you, the familiar things in your life, It's not the time to retreat. It's time to refocus. When the Lord begins pruning things, don't see the pruning as discipline, like that you're doing everything wrong. He prunes fruitful branches so that they can become more fruitful. Pruning can happen in a lot of ways. I was pruned. My buddy left. The family couldn't house me. Everything familiar was stripped away. You can either retreat or you can refocus. Too many people retreat in the obscurity. Genesis 13, 4. Man, T.D. Jace could preach this way better than me, but I'm going to do it because it was, it was just life-changing revelation here. He says this. This is when Abraham and Lot, they separate from one another. So it's family. They're together. But there's not enough room for all of them. So Lot chooses this zone over here. Abraham chooses this zone over here. And as soon as Abraham and Lot split ways, as soon as the familiar leaves Abraham, this is what the Lord says. Lift up your eyes and look from the place where you are. That's a prophetic word to you right now. Lift up your eyes. Look from the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward, westward. For all the land that you see, I will give to you and your offspring forever. Verse 17, arise, walk through the length and the breadth of the land, for I will give it to you. We have to learn to live in the realm of promise. Abraham, get up. Walk the land. It's not your possession yet, but I'm going to give it to you. Become familiar with it. Become familiar with the promise. We have to learn to live from promise. Walk the land. Live there. It's yours. It's coming. You don't have possession of it yet, but take hold of it by faith. Can I give you a mind bender here? I heard this this concept and it just I mean it struck me have you ever thought about how creative God is just for a moment just track with me for a moment that the Lord the Father chose to redeem humanity by sending his son so God takes on flesh that alone it's not what I would have thought to do okay lives a perfect life on the earth And then he says, I'm going to have those ones that I created you. They're going to murder you. They're going to kill you. They're actually going to nail you to a wooden cross. And and they're going to brutally murder you. But while they're doing it, I'm going to have you forgive them. And then you're going to (laughs) die. And you're going to get put in a tomb. But three days later, I'm going to raise you from the dead. And then the same spirit that lived in you and came upon you and raised you up, I'm going to put inside of the creation that killed you. And you think that you're going to have a boring life with the creator who's that creative? 
We worry about that, oh, is God going to give me a boring call? He doesn't give boring callings. He doesn't give boring assignments. It's not in his nature. It's not possible. The father, oh, here's the concept. You ready? The father is so solution-oriented that Jesus was the lamb slain before the foundations of the world, meaning before there was ever a problem, God had a solution. That's called renewed mind thinking. That's called change the way you think about everything. God is so solution-oriented. Before there was ever a problem, I've got the solution. My son nailed to a tree, man. I've got the solution. Can I be so bold to tell you tonight that the Lord has not abandoned you? I'm going to say it again. The Lord of glory has not abandoned you. And he will not abandon you. Can I give you another word of encouragement? You need someone to tell you tonight that you're right on track. Culture won't tell you that. Instagram won't tell you that. Twitter won't tell you that. Facebook feed won't tell you that. Your friends most likely won't tell you that because there's a famine of encouragement in the earth. There's a famine of blessing. But I'm standing here representing the Father right now saying you are on the right track. I'll say it again because not all of you believe me. You are on the right track. It's time to believe God. It's time to believe God. Though right now you don't see what he's doing. You don't see it with your visible eyes. It's not out in front of you. He's working behind the scenes. He's moving things around to get you where he wants you. He said, if I told you everything now, you wouldn't believe me. He's moving things. And here's the deal. You may not be where you want to be, but I'm telling you that you aren't where you were. I'll say it again. You're not, I know, I know I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you straight in the face. You're not where you want to be, but you're not where you were. You're not where you've been. Do you know where you are? You're at the intersection of breakthrough, man. That's where you're sitting. That's where you're sitting. You're advancing. You're moving. God's fighting on your behalf. Jericho walls are coming down, man. No, they can't stand. They can't stay up. The word of promise is coming to your doorstep. But here's the deal. The band, you guys can come on back up. All throughout history, all throughout history, God has been looking for those who are foolish enough to take him at his word. He's looking for those who will become so foolish to take him at the word that he has said. God has raised up men and women throughout the generations in response to the groan that's happening in the earth. When the world is in decay and corruption, what happens? He finds a Noah. No, come on. He finds a man, a righteous Noah, who has never seen rain. And he says, Noah, floods are coming. You said it, I'll build it. I haven't seen it. I don't even know what you're talking about. But I'll build the boat. He finds Abraham and Sarah who through their own natural means cannot produce the promise. He says, get out from familiar territory. I'm going to birth it through you. They break camp with the familiar and they step into obscurity, not relying on what they see, but they rely on the one because the one who called is faithful. Come on, they're not relying on what they see. But the one who calls and leads is faithful. When the eyes of the Lord see the affliction and hear the groans of the people. Oh, God finds 
a Moses being prepared on the backside of a mountain. He finds a man who's audacious enough to believe that the seas can split when he raises his staff. He raises up a deliverer. He finds one. Oh, you've been crushed. You've been in the pressure cooker. You're ready, Moses. Hebrews tells us that Moses endured by seeing him who is invisible. Hebrews 11, read it. But you got to know something. When Moses is doing his work, you got to know that there's a Joshua refusing to leave the tent, lingering in the presence, being prepared to take the land. He's lingering. He's lingering. When Saul's on the throne and not doing his job, you got to know that God is preparing a young David on the hillside who can kill the giants that are waging war on a generation. When the religious order of the day is placing heavy burdens on the people, you got to know that God raises up a ragtag team of roughnecks, tax collectors, zealots, and fishermen who get consumed by the grace of God to build Jesus' church. When persecution arises, God can take hold of the man who's breathing threats against the church and knock him off his horse and give him a revelation of grace. And Saul becomes Paul. And the one who is breathing threats becomes the missionary church planner who writes half the New Testament. Time doesn't permit us to talk about the church fathers, the reformers, Wilberforce, Mother Teresa, William and Catherine Booth, Hudson Taylor, the Moravians, George Whitfield, John Wesley, William Seymour, Evan Roberts, Catherine Kuhlman, Amy Simple McPherson, Elizabeth Elliot, Reinhard Bonnke, Billy Graham. The list goes on and on and on. Put your name in the blank. If you narrowed their lives down to one common denominator, They had one irreplaceable force. They believed God. They believed God. They believed God. I'm prophesying to you tonight. You are one thought away from breakthrough. One thought can change everything. One thought can change everything. When we were doing our campus tours up and down California, and we didn't really, we were just trying to figure out, Lord, what are you saying? We had this event. You maybe heard the story at UC Davis. Nick is on the side. He's got to close the night. He doesn't know what to say to close the night. He doesn't know what to say. And then God gives him a thought. Don't discount your thoughts. God gives him a thought. I want you to go up in front of the room, and I want you to have everyone declare out loud, carry the love. We'd never talked about that phrase. We'd never heard that phrase. It was just a thought. He gets up. The room declares out, we will carry the love. And from the obedience to one thought, what you now see as this carry the love campaign that's sweeping the earth. Come on, come on, man. It came from a thought. It came from a thought. It came from one moment. Oh, if God could whisper one thought into your ear, everything could change. Everything could change. I'm calling you higher tonight. I'm telling you, it's time to believe. It's time to break the fake narrative over your life that other people have written about you. It's time to break the fake narrative of what culture says about you. It's time to break the fake narrative of what your, maybe your past generation suffered with. Why do you have to suffer with it? Why do you have to go through it? Why do you have to go around that cul-de-sac round and around and around? Why can't today be the day of breakthrough? Oh, I'm telling you, you got to believe it. you got to believe God. It's not up to you. When God gave the promise to Abraham, he didn't say, Abraham, you're going to know. I will bless you. I will give you the land. It's dependent on him. I need you to stand with me tonight. We're gonna we're gonna do something tonight. We're at the intersection of breakthrough. We're going for it tonight. Are you with me? 
I feel like we're almost there, but I, we got to do, we got to activate. We got to activate into something tonight because you got to start believing. Listen, hear me, hear me, hear me. You got to start believing what God says about you. You're not going to get a boring assignment from heaven. Heaven doesn't hand out boring assignments. You weren't created to not have impact. Jesus didn't die just so you could manage your sin throughout life and one day stand at the pearly gates and beg him to come in. No, he died to put his very spirit in you. He says, you're going to do great exploits. Arise, walk the land. Walk the territory. Live in promise. Believe me. Believe me. We're going to raise our voice tonight and make some declarations. We're going to wage war on every demonic storyline that's trying to harass you, and tonight we're settling it. Here's the deal. We got some verses we're going to throw up. We call some of these, we call them the Christian birthright card. These aren't things you earn. These are things given to you. You didn't hear it. You don't earn these. You don't work your way into these. You grab hold of them by faith. You chuck them on the inside of you and you let these be the plumb line for your life. Can we get the first one up on the screen? I am living in Christ's authority, which gives me power over all of the power of the enemy. We're going to declare this one together. I want you to, but here's the deal. You got to match my cadence. Come on. You got to match my cadence. Weak prayers, bathe in unbelief, ain't going to change nothing. You got to match my cadence tonight because it's God's cadence over your life. We're matching his cadence. You ready? I want you to repeat after me. I am living in Christ's authority, which gives me power over all of the power of the enemy. Come on. Give me the next verse. Give me the next verse. Say this with me. I am not condemned. condemned. I'm declared fully forgiven forgiven. and righteous righteous. in Christ. Christ. Come on, give me the next one. I am an overwhelming conqueror conqueror. in Christ Christ. against all that would come against me. No, we got to do that one again. Go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. I am an overwhelming conqueror conqueror. in Christ Christ. against all that would come against me. me. Give me the next one. I am a new creation in Christ. Christ. Old things are passing away. away. It's not written up there, but say all things are being made new. Give me the next one. I am righteous with God's righteousness. righteousness. You can stay on this one for a moment. Stay on this one for a moment. Abraham, the father of faith, settled for Hagar, but it didn't deter the promise. Why do you think your failure is forfeiting your calling? No, 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 no. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Your slate gets wiped clean. He forgives and he forgets. We're so used to always confessing our sin, and we should and we must. It's biblical. Don't stop doing it. But there's a moment when you got to start confessing the cross to your sin. you got to say, I've been in this cul-de-sac for a long time. The cross didn't purchase me a cul-de-sac. The cross gave me the righteousness of God. Say it with me. I am righteous righteous. with God's righteousness. righteousness. Give me the next one. I am seated in the heavenly realm. realm. Say it again. I am seated in the heavenly realm realm. with Christ Christ. in in all his authority over Satan's kingdom. Give me the next one. I am the light of God. I I 
expose the darkness by Christ's life in me. Is there another one or was that the last one? Whoa, oh, here we go. I am an expression of the life of Christ because he is my life. Is that the last one? All right, hang on. We're going a little bit further. We're going a little bit further. We got a few breakthrough prayers we got to pray together. But I got, I got to ask you to do something. You got to come forward. You got to, you got to get out of your chair. You got to get out of comfortable zone. I'm not going to force you, but I'd love you to. And now we're going to pray, we're going to pray out some breakthrough prayers that a personal hero wrote. His name is Frank Damasio. Some of these are his prayers that he's written now, and I, I, they just so resonate with me. Can we, can we give our guts to these things? I'm telling, I'm telling you that when we read the last one, I feel like the Spirit of God is going to land on you. No, I'm telling you. When David was anointed, it said the Spirit rushed on him. It rushed on him. I'm going to read you two verses, and then we're going to read the first prayer. You ready? 1 John 4, 4. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because he who is in you is greater than than he who is in the world. Deuteronomy 28, 7, the Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. Get the first prayer up there. Nope, that's not it. Lord, grant me the spiritual understanding. It's that one. We're doing good. We're doing good. We're going to read these out. we got to declare them. you got to go with me. I'm going to say one, two, three, and we're going to read it out loud. And I want you to pray this from your heart. Come on, don't enter into the old religious mode. No, these, just because it's written and you're reading it out, there's the Spirit of God's on this thing. So I'm going to say one, two, three, then we're going to read it out. I want you to just, everything inside of you, declare this out and believe this. Prophesy. Listen, if you've never received a prophetic word, prophesy over yourself tonight. All right, here we go. One, two, three. Lord, grant me the spiritual understanding of how I can resist the devil. I have faith and I stand against the enemy through the power of Jesus' name. God is my shield and my strength, a very pleasant help in time of trouble. When the enemy comes against my soul, the Holy Spirit will raise a standard against him. The Lord will be my strength and I shall not be moved. I shall stand my ground in the day of battle. Come on, give a shout to Jesus. All right, this one we're going to do here. I'm going to read a verse and then we're going to we're going to do the first one you put up back there. Psalm 5, 11 and 12. But let all those who rejoice, let all those rejoice who put their trust in you. Let them ever shout for joy because you defend them. Let those also who love your name be joyful in you. For you, O oh Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor you will surround him as a shield. We're declaring out a prayer for blessing and favor over my life. It's the one that starts in Jesus' name by the power of the blood. Can you put that one up? Come on, one, two, three, let's read it. In Jesus' name, by the power of the blood shed on the cross, by the authority of the scriptures, I proclaim a mighty blessing upon my life, my now, my future, and all that pertains to my life, my health, my home, my finances, my community, and my church. Come on. We're going to keep going. Right now, we're going to go after our thinking. After our thinking, 2 Timothy 1.7, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Hebrews 12.1, therefore we also, since we are so surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside, everybody say lay aside, every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance, say endurance, the race that is set before us. If you then were raised with Christ, Seek those things which are above where Christ is, 
seated at the right hand of God, set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. This one starts with Holy Spirit align my thought life. Come on, put that one up there for us. One, two, three. Holy Spirit, align my thought life to you. Your word, your spirit. I know my thoughts will determine the level of my spiritual health and ultimately my spiritual destiny. Lord, teach me to weigh my thoughts. Choose those thoughts that are pure and pleasing to you. Come on. A couple more. We're going to do the power to resist right now. Wait, did we do that one? We did that one. Power to break through. Here we go. Isaiah 58, 8. Then your light shall break forth like the morning. Your healing shall spring forth speedily, and your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Micah 2.13, the one who breaks open will come up before them. They will break out, pass through the gate, and go out by it. Their king will pass before them with the Lord at their head. Philippians 3.12-14, not that I have already attained it or am already perfected, but I press on. Everybody say, press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid a hold of me. I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting, everybody say forgetting, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward, everybody say reaching forward, to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. This one says starts with in the mighty name of Jesus. Can we get it up there? One, two, three, let's go. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray with great faith that the new doors you have for my life will open. I will pray through to you. Come on, keep This is the last one. You ready? And when we read this one, here's what I want you to do. I'm telling you, I feel the Spirit on this. After we read it, I just want you to go in just to begin to cry out for the Spirit to rush on you, for Him to change your thinking, for the Holy Spirit to just overtake you. We're going to go into high praise and worship. And I'm telling you, there's an impartation of the Holy Spirit tonight that's going to charge you forward. I'm telling you, tonight, breakthrough is at the door. Let me read you these verses. We're going to cry out for a fresh anointing on my life. Luke 4, 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. Acts 1, 8. But you shall receive power. Everybody say power. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, to the ends of the earth. This one starts in Jesus' name I receive. Put it up there. Listen, hang on, hang on. I want you to pray this one with everything you have within you. I want you to know and believe and enter in that God wants to meet you. That He didn't create you to have a lack of power. He didn't create you to walk with lack. He wants to give you abundance. And included in the abundance is the abundance of the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So one, two, three, let's read this. In Jesus' name. I receive this day a new, fresh, powerful anointing on my life. A yoke breaking anointing. A power breaking anointing. Holy Spirit, come upon me mightily today. Upon my body, soul, and spirit. Upon my mind, will, and emotions. Anoint my life with Holy Spirit power. Let the oil of gladness. Come on, begin to cry out for the Holy Spirit to come. Come on, lift your voice. Lift your voice. Just begin to ask Him. Ask the Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come on, keep crying out for Him. Keep crying out for the Spirit. Come on, tell Him you believe Him. Tell Him you believe Him about your life. Tell Him you believe Him about your life. Come on, tell Him you believe Him about your life. Come on, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Come, Holy Spirit.
dance dissolve Don't you tell me he can't do Don't you tell me he can't do I've seen real life resurrection I've seen mental health restore Don't you tell me he can't do Oh, we're prophesying Yeah, come on and prophesy And I've seen families reunited I've seen prodigals return Don't you tell me your personal life, I don't know if it's your calling, I don't know if it's your bank account, I'm telling you, you are at the intersection of breakthrough, come on, don't tell me he can't do it, don't tell me he can't do it, receive your breakthrough in Jesus' name, Zach's going to sing this over us, and I want you to take hold of this by faith, come on, let's go for it. See, I've seen cancer, I've seen cancer disappear, I've seen metal plates dissolve. Don't you tell me he can't do it. Don't you tell me he can't do it. I've seen real life resurrection. I've seen mental health restored. Don't you tell me he can't oh, this All of this is for you. This is you in the room. I've seen families reunited. I've seen fraud. Come on.
few more times. Sing it out. Too good. Come on, sing it out a few times. Too good. Come on, just tell them you're too good to not believe. It's too good to not believe. Sing it again. Come on. Come on, tonight, I, I just feel we gotta, we got to make this final declaration tonight that says, come hell or high water, I'm not turning the car around. Whatever comes, whatever faces me, whatever I face, whatever adversity gets thrown my way, I'm doubling down on what the Lord has said. I'm advancing. I'm moving forward. I'm not retreating. I'm going to refocus. The Lord has spoken. I want you to say this with me. Say in Jesus' name. I'm not turning around. My car won't go in neutral. It won't go in reverse. I'm moving forward. I'm advancing. I'm advancing by the Holy Spirit. I'm moving forward. Breakthrough is mine. There's purpose in the pain. There's a calling in the crushing. There's new wine for me. There's fresh anointing for me. There's miracles for me. My family will be restored. My city will get saved. My nation will turn. Jesus will receive worship. Come on, give a shout to Jesus.
that what feels like a weight is a preparation. We refuse, we refuse to move outside of your anointing on our lives. We believe, we believe. You're too good not to believe what you've spoken. You're too good to not believe what you've spoken. telling you it's coming the unknown sickness clarity's coming come on clarity's coming healing's coming healing's coming healing's coming oh there's purpose in the waiting there's breakthrough in it there's forming in it he's doing something in it i don't know what he's doing but i'm telling you breakthrough's coming clarity's coming in jesus name finances I'm telling you if you haven't seen the breakthrough yet it's because you haven't needed it yet no I'm telling you he's not behind no he doesn't get behind he doesn't he doesn't get behind he's right on time some of you have been you've been praying for dreams in the night and you haven't been getting them Lord says, because you don't need it right now. He wants you to change the way you think so that when you ask for a dream and you go to sleep and you don't get it, you wake up saying, oh, he must not, I don't must not need it. I know what I'm doing. I'm on track. You don't get into discouragement and say, I need to fast more. I need to do this. I need to do this. No, no, no. He's saying, you're on track. There's time for those things. Right now, the Spirit's saying, you're on track. Change the way you think. The kingdom has come. It's within reach. Holy Spirit, I pray this week, Holy Spirit, for an impartation throughout this week of renewed mind, kingdom thinking. Holy Spirit, that every day we would wake up, today's a day of breakthrough. Today's a day of breakthrough. Oh, I don't see it with my eyes, but you're working. You're moving. You're preparing. You're shifting things in my life. Today's a day of breakthrough. That when we go to bed, we would know tonight's a night of breakthrough. We wake up the next morning, breakthrough. We go to work, breakthrough. Thank you, Jesus. Here's what I want to do tonight. This is how I want to end tonight. The Lord is calling you out of your comfort zone. He's charging you forward. Because you weren't made for familiarity. You weren't made to be comfortable. You were made to advance the kingdom. You are called, appointed, and chosen. So here's what I want you to do. I want you as you leave tonight. I don't want you to leave without doing this. I want you to find somebody you don't know. Now, you don't have to go into too many details, but I want you to tell them the breakthrough you're believing for, and I want you to agree with each other. It doesn't have to be long. You can just tell them, and then when when someone tells you that that's the breakthrough they're believing for, I want you just to look at them and say, breakthrough's on the way. Just say, right in the eyes, everything within you, breakthrough's on the way. And then I want you to tell that person what you're believing breakthrough's for. And I want the other person to say it back to you, breakthrough's on the way. And I want to end that way tonight by stepping out of our comfort zone and declaring over each other, breakthrough is on the way. I want to pray and then we'll close. Jesus, we love you. We honor you. We thank you. I thank you for every person in this room. I thank you that they are called, chosen, appointed, and anointed to lead and to run fast, to not turn around, to not look backwards, to not look in the rear view mirror, to not think about old things, to not let old relationships and old things dictate the future. Tonight is about looking forward. You are advancing us. Breakthrough is on the way. We bless you tonight, Jesus. So I want you to find somebody. I want you to tell it to them tonight. I want you to look them in the face. Breakthrough is on the way. And if you feel like they don't believe it, I want you to say it until they believe it. And we want to leave tonight with a smile on our face saying that breakthrough is on the way. We won't see you next week, but the following week, I'm believing you're going to come back with so many testimonies of how God is advancing your life. Amen? Amen. Find somebody, share it with them. Have an awesome night tonight.